What is going on guys? Jason Burke here, Styles Clash for Life, coming at you on YouTube and today I've got some football focus. Every time that I release a video, the Steelers do something else. I release a video and the Steelers release somebody off their roster. So the last couple of times that I've made videos, uh, news has dropped just on the exact day uh, of whatever's happened. So I'm trying to catch up now with Pittsburgh roster moves, recording these videos back to back and putting them out. Uh, interspersed throughout your week. Um, if you guys want to see more of my offseason coverage so far, I've covered the Steelers cornerback room, which I'll be talking about again today. I've covered the Steelers offensive line and how they improve through the draft and free agency, and the Steelers defensive line and who could stay and who could go and how improved they are from last year. So I've got deep dives in those three positions already on this channel. Go check that out. Plus all the free agency and draft coverage you could ever want that's happened over the past few months is all on this channel. And today I want to bring you guys a couple quick updates about the roster since we last spoke and kind of what it means for the upcoming season. Number one, we got two quarterback moves here. We got Mitch Trubisky, our backup quarterback, signed a three-year extension with us. And I look at this as a big win. I know people were like, oh, Trubisky, he didn't look amazing when he started or he was inconsistent when he started. He's nothing more than a backup. That's exactly what he's brought here to be. People don't like this move and I can't understand why. Trubisky is for all intents and purposes, one of the best backups in the NFL. He's got starting experience. He's been at one time Pro Bowl alternate. He's played at a decent level as an NFL starter at times. Even last year, he was wildly inconsistent and did cost us the Baltimore game, that second game. But play, you know, played well enough to get us a few wins early in the season. He's an experienced guy. He's got some wheels. He can move a little bit. He can throw the ball a little bit. He's not the best guy in the world, but he is one of the best backups in the league with a lot of experience. And this three-year extension means now that Kenny Pickett has uh, a window where he has his next three years because Pickett signed for the next three years as well. They're both now signed through 2025, and Pickett has an experienced backup that he can learn from who's played in the NFL and who, you know, God forbid if Kenny gets hurt, which we don't want, we're at least putting somebody with starting NFL experience and former NFL success in the starting lineup. So having one of the better backups in the league is a good way to help bring your rookie quarter, your now second year quarterback along in Kenny Pickett. Also, this three year extension uh, cuts down what he was going to be spending this year. We were going to spend $10 million on him this year. Now he's going to make $8 million. So you extend him and you lower his cap hit for this coming season, which gives us more money. So that's a positive as well. I love this move. Three year extension for Mitch. I like that a lot. Now something I'm kind of ambivalent toward the other quarterback move we made. The day before, I think we signed Mitch to a uh, three-year extension. We re-signed Mason Rudolph to a one-year contract. Now, there for some reason on these message boards, there are really hardcore Mason Rudolph fans who believe he is the best quarterback on this team and should be starting over Kenny and Mitch. I think that's ridiculous. We've seen enough of Mitch as the starter, uh, enough of Mason as the starter to know that he's not going to carry a team as a starter. And obviously, if he was that valuable, he would have gone somewhere else to at least be a backup. He had all this time to shop around for all 31 other teams, and nobody even wanted him as a number two quarterback, or he would have gone there. He's the number three here at best, if not worst, fighting for his job with a couple other free agents we brought in. But at the very best on this team, he's the third quarterback. And if he could have gotten even the backup quarterback anywhere else, he would have gone there. But um, so that just kind of is to shout down the, the hardcore Mason lovers, uh, which, which he has a really diehard fan base. I have no idea what he's done or why to garner that fan base. But again, I'm, I've not been the biggest Mason Rudolph fan. You guys know what I think about this, uh, him as a player so far. But again, for a one year deal, for, for a vet minimum to be the third string quarterback. That's, that's not a horrible deal. He's not bad as third-string quarterbacks go. I have no problem with him being the third guy on this roster. He knows the system, and he has started some games, and he's not lost all those games. So he's not bad for a third guy. For a one-year deal, nothing wrong with it. I don't hate the move as much as I'm not a big Rudolph fan. But these people that are saying he's better than Trubisky and Kenny and should be our starter right away, I no, I'm, I'm, I'm good with that. Uh, but Pittsburgh has made a few cornerback moves as well, not just quarterback, but cornerback. And that affects my last video. I talked about the uh, eight guys who were vying for potentially six spots on this Steelers roster next season at corner if Pittsburgh were to keep six corners. Well, we're down to six potential starting or, uh, main roster corners now with the release of two of them. We released Arthur Mallette. I guess he requested a release once he realized he was competing with so many other guys. We brought in two free agent uh, corners this offseason. We drafted two corners in the draft. So that's four more bodies for Mallette, who was already kind of competing. So he asked for his release. Um, I'm sad to see him go. I like Mallette. 
Um, he, again, he's not a great coverage corner, but he is a good kind of a box corner. He's got that that Mike Hilton kind of, uh, you know, like rush off the edge. He can blitz. He can tackle the running backs. He can get off the edge when the running backs are trying to go around the corner. He's a good hitter and a good tackler, and I think he was a nice contribution guy for this team. I uh, didn't want to see him go, but I can understand why with four new names coming in, why he wouldn't want to be here next season. Uh, he's, 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 got, uh, he's, he's worthy of being a slot corner somewhere. Um, but that said, we also cut Akella Weatherspoon. That was one of the big names we were waiting to see what was going to happen. He was our uh, came in as our starter for the last two years. Played uh, the last four or five games in uh, not this past season but the one before it and played very, very, very well. Had a four or five game stretch where he had three or four picks. He was really our cornerback one. He was playing lockdown football for the last quarter of that season. But last year... Um, came in as a starter, came in a little banged up, uh, got beat a lot on some one-on-ones, got beat on some deep balls, didn't have bad body position, but he didn't look like he had the speed or the physicality to out-wrestle the jump balls and stuff, so much more physical receivers were um, taking stuff away from him and making him look bad. So not surprised that he was cut. Uh, I think he saved us, I think, $4 million against the cap. He was one of our bigger cap casualties that could have been cut, so this makes sense as to save some money. And again, we have six other guys on the roster with some form of experience in the NFL um, who already makes sense to be here. So with Witherspoon and Mullet being gone, the six the six main guys we have right now uh, are um, Patrick Peterson, Levi Wallace, Joey Porter Jr., Chandon Sullivan, who we, we just got from, I think, the um, Vikings... I think Vikings was one of his teams. Uh, Corey Trice, our seventh-round pick, and James Pierre, who's back on a one-year deal after uh, free agency. So we got six guys here who have, who have NFL experience, who have played in games. Uh, we also just signed the XFL, one of their leading corners, Luke Barku. Um, I think he was a late-round or undrafted player in the NFL for a year or so, played in the XFL pretty well this past season. So he's someone to look at. He looks pretty physical as well. But I like the six guys we have here. Obviously, we're going to start. Um, I think Peterson and Porter would start on the outside for two corner sets, and then if you're going to go with three corners, you would start Wallace and Porter on the outside, and then put Peterson on the inside. Uh, so he has kind of versatility there. And then obviously, Trace and Pierre are backup outside guys, and Chandon Sullivan is the backup slot. So I think you have six pretty solid corners there, and then you have guys like Barku you can look at and see what they bring to the table. Um, but also one more XFL signing I wanted to touch on real quick that I didn't touch on. I'm not really touching on many of these camp bodies. Pittsburgh has their roster down to 90 guys. Um, obviously out of those 90 guys, only 53 are going to make the roster. Uh, a lot of these guys are just camp bodies who are competing to, to keep other guys healthy and honest. Um, but one, the one kind of camp body signing that I'm looking forward to really seeing is Akeem Butler, uh, the XFL's player. I think he was from the St. Louis Battle Hawks, I believe. Uh, he played on this year. His college tape is freakish. If you look at this guy, I mean, he's got underrated speed. His footwork is solid. He breaks tackles. He runs through guys. He can jump out the building. He's a really good physical deep ball threat, good ball tracker. Uh, he has everything that, you know, a, a guy from last year, like, was not. You look at a Chase Claypool. He's a bigger, physical, more consistent Chase Claypool. Uh, but can he do it at the NFL level? He was a fourth-round draft pick from the Cardinals. Bounced around a little bit. They tried to make him a tight end because uh, he wasn't fitting at receiver. And then he went off to play in the Canadian Football League. Didn't really stick there. Sent a letter out after the XFL. Players already had tried out. Uh, didn't make tryouts. Sent a letter to one of the owners. Got to play for the Battle Hawks and went crazy this season, making play after play. I think he had 55 catches for like 550 yards and led the league with eight touchdown catches. Something like that. This season, so just looks really good. Breaking a lot of tackles, good footwork. Like I said, underrated speed, physical guy, great sideline guy, good ball tracker in the air, good jumper. He's just a physical freak who would make a really nice, I mean, he would really just be a fifth receiver on this team. Um, we already obviously have our big four with Deontay Pickens, Allen Robinson, and hopefully we're hoping for Calvin Austin to come through. So if anything, he's the fifth receiver. But to have an extra deep ball guy, kind of like a Darius Hayward Bay was for us, we've had a couple of those guys who were just sideline streakers, and Butler does that well. So he would have to beat out guys like Anthony Miller and Gunnar Olszewski and Miles Boykin especially, because Boykin has a similar body type and does a similar thing for us. 
uh, just not as much on the receiver end, but really special teams is where he shines. So Butler would have to beat those guys out as a receiver and be good on special teams to take a, take a Miles Boykin spot because that's more of his direct competition. So he's got an uphill climb, but because of his college tape and his XFL uh, coming off a fresh XFL season, granted, we know the XFL is a lot of former NFL players or guys that can't hang in the NFL, uh, so it's lesser competition, but he's coming off of I said, not not just a great college career and being drafted in the fourth round in the NFL, but playing fresh spring ball where he looked really good against other guys playing fresh spring ball. So it's something to look at down the road. Just a name thrown out there that I'm going to watch in camp and see what he can do. And maybe he makes this roster. So those are some recent roster moves. What do you guys think? Anybody in camp you're super excited about? What do you think about these two quarterback re-signings and these two cornerback cuts? Tell me in the comments down below. Please watch my other Steelers offseason videos and come back soon as I'll be doing more positional breakdowns for the offseason. And I will see you guys soon. Take care and uh, go Steelers.